Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. This is going to be a slightly different video than some of I've put out. But I just finished a piece for Father's Day and thought, you know, I think a lot of my viewers would like this. So I thought I'd share it with you. A floating frame. And it's really easy to do. Hang around. Okay, so this is a spin on a design I received from one of my viewers and one of my patrons. He had a the same concept, but it was a very, very feminine frame. It was very pretty. And I needed a piece for a Father's Day project. And this is what I designed. I struggled with what I was going to do for a more masculine type frame, a border around the frame. And uh, the same patron uh, actually suggested, hey, you know that video you did on uh, designing a Greek border? That'd be a pretty good, and sure enough. So if you haven't seen that video and you like this design, I have a, a video on just how to create that design for your artwork. So this is, uh, this is my original concept as far as the, the way this is done, the, the, the Greek style frame. And the, the way I've done the base is completely different than what he had. Uh, and I added a, uh, a, a mat, if you will. Uh, this is a simulated mat that goes around the image. I'm going to have this item for sale on hobowithwood.com. I'm not going to be selling the 65 Chevy uh, artwork, just the frame. It is a three-layer design. The top layer is obviously what you see is just the, the white border. The second layer has got an offset image of the same Greek border, depending on how well the lighting is. It's painted red in there. You may or may not be able to see it in this lighting. And then the third layer is a solid piece, which I painted just the perimeter black, so that there's a black that you see through there, then the red, then the white. And then after finishing and painting the, the white border, I sanded it back down to expose a lot of the natural wood so it has a weathered or a whitewash look to it. And then that gets a, a layer of lacquer to protect it. But the image area, I actually finished with the triple thick glaze, and I'll show you the link to that as well. And that triple thick glaze gives it the appearance of being behind glass. And then also, the uh, I painted the image with some acrylic paint pens, really fine point paint pens. I tried working with Sharpie markers, and and some of you can uh, have uh, you know, claimed to have gotten really good results with Sharpies, but I, no matter what, I always can see the Sharpie marker lines. You can see where the you started drawing and finished, and you know, it, and they don't it doesn't overlap and blend well. Well, these acrylic paint pens do not give you any of that, and and it's a super fine point. You can see here, I did not even do the molding of the truck i left it natural and then hand or the, used another sh thin sharpie to do or not sharpie but acrylic pen to do the grill but the back of it is done in the natural wood with just two slots cut in it for this piece to snap into somebody hollering at me always and then two slots cut in this for the base and the base is three layers. It's really easy to do. Let's take a look at this design in Lightburn and how it's laid out and what you can expect to see if you buy this from Hobo with Wood. Okay, this video is why my projects are worth what they're worth. 
you can buy these projects something similar to this maybe buy it for a couple of bucks but they're not going to show you how to use it in Lightburn and and have tested it and made it themselves in most of the cases and I'm going to show you how this works how to make it work with the material you have so that you don't have any problems when you buy this file so the first thing I recommend doing is cutting this piece here this piece is going to be the part that snaps into the the frame snaps onto and then snaps into the base but you're going to cut this piece first and you'll understand why in a second so select it move it to the middle of your screen now the first thing you're going to want to do is set the height of your tabs you have four tabs here one two that snap into the back of the frame and one two that snap into the base now you can determine the height of these tabs by simply selecting your selecting your ruler and coming over here and highlighting one of those segments and you can see there your uh, measurement is 2.8 millimeters that is the thickness of the material that I was working with when I designed this product so 2.8 millimeters is the current tab height you measure your material if your material has an average thickness of 3.2 millimeters then you you're going to want to make this larger so that you get as much snapped into your material as po or in, into your back of your frame and your base as possible so with that selected you go to tools resize slots and selection we are working with the tab height the old material thickness right now it's 2.8 we know that we just measured it but because I've got the tolerance set so high here at one millimeter that it's picking up on those tab heights so that's something you can do as well to where you don't even have to bother measuring it if you get close and set your tolerance your new material thickness we said we want it to be 3.2 millimeters is what your average thickness is right now on your material and I might do 3.1 and that way it's going to be short enough to get a fully engaged and snapped into the back of your material so 3.1 is my new tab height and say okay and if I want to double check that you can come here and check there we go 3.1 millimeters is the new tab height now it's ready to cut out in the material you have once that cutout is complete take this piece off your work bed and measure the thickness of these two tabs and only these two tabs right now once you measure that thickness you said your nominal thickness was 3.2 millimeters but if this piece of wood after you've cut it out and you check it it's only measuring at three millimeters that's what you're going to want to make these tabs be the those slots rather these tabs are going to fit into this slot so if you measure the thickness of this material then you select this piece you'll need to ungroup it completely then select those slots go in tools resize slots and uh, selection we're going to change our slot width and we're going to tell it uh, whatever you said it was three millimeters change it new material to thickness to three millimeters and say okay now draw from here to here select everything regroup it you can move this over here that's a completed piece take this piece center or you know in fact you don't even you don't have to do just one pretty sure if you're working with a 12 by 12 um, piece of material which that's what both most of us can buy uh, it's actually lock our aspect ratio I think it's actually 300 by 300 millimeters put that on a toolpath center it to the page now you know you can take this and move that up and this piece doesn't require any of the artwork or graphics it just needs to be cut out and engraved so you can get two pieces on one piece of board at one time send all that to the, to the laser now the way that this piece is set up down here 
there's two layers the cut layer and then this multiple multi-layer which i said is the simulated um oh fudge what is that word uh not a border but matting simulated matting and you can decide if you don't want that you can delete it but i've got it set up if we go in and look it's set up currently on a cross hatch and a 45 degree angle and i've got the line interval set at 1.4 110 1.4 which is 18 lines per inch and if we go in and look at the preview that's what you're going to create that cross hatch making that simulated matting around the frame if you use the settings that I have here now also you see it's in multi mode because there's also a line after feel line after feel what that's going to do in fact let's turn this off we'll get rid of this now go look at our preview well that did I, I didn't say okay did I duh delete say okay now look at our preview you see this is an open right here in fact that red line should not no nope nope take that back this is the top layer the reason you see a line here is because that is on the cut layer so if I turned off the cut layer and did the preview well it's still showing you there's a cut layer here to cut that out so that you get you can see your artwork on the other sub layer the other piece of layer the wood beneath it duh okay so what I was showing you now though this mat has an open end right here that's what the purpose that's the purpose of the line after feel so add and it's gonna be a line and the only thing that you'll need to worry about is setting your power settings to, to the desired look you want to have um, so your power settings may be the only thing you need to change but I wouldn't change anything else my recommendation all right so this is now ready to send to the laser and you're gonna get both of these cut out of one 12 by 12 piece of wood now if we select both of these they've been cut they're done now you want to grab your original piece again and you want to measure the thickness of these two tabs the ones on the bottom that are going to snap into the base that's this piece here once you know your thickness of those tabs unlock all of this ungroup all of this rather once it's all ungrouped tools resize slots and selection and if that uh, we're going to change our slot width and if that measured out at 3.2 or I'm sorry the original you in fact what was the original actually you know what because I've got the tolerance set so high here on my resizing slots I don't even have to go measure uh, just say that it because it's close to three millimeters because it, it the fact that it's blue it means it's picking up on them so the old material thickness and the new material thickness is 3.2 millimeters say okay that's going to change that you can then grab it all group that all back together so that if you move it around you don't change the location of your tabs that is now ready to cut can you get more than one piece on there most likely yes and somebody's hollering at me let's grab us another layer of the base yep so now in fact what you can do take this piece and dock it straight up like so and that's going to overlap those lines and when you go into your set optimization settings here make sure you have this remove overlapping lines turned on and your tolerance is set uh, 
very small, and then I've got it at 0 0.025 millimeters. What that's going to do is if we go in and look at our preview. Oh, I've got too many passes turned on. Let's turn these passes off. Say OK. Now I'll go back in there. All right, so there you see that the entire bottom piece is cut out. And I'm going to slow this down and tell it to play. Jumping it, there we go. Now watch it when it gets to the corner here, makes a turn. And then the laser is going to speed up and bypass what was already cut and start its next cut. So that's going to save you some time on the laser. All right, now that that's done, set them out of the way. You've got your base base to cut and then your artwork to cut. Now, as I said, if I ungroup all of this right here and take just that tool path, I'm gonna control D, duplicate it, and bring it over here and show you that center to up there you can see the toolpath there is going to be slightly larger than the opening that's cut out of this piece here. So for that reason, you're going to want to set your image to fill this area. All right. Set your image in there, whatever artwork it's going to be. What, what do we have? Let's grab baby shower. Add it to graphic. That one's not a real good one for landscape mode. I would put that in a portrait mode. Let's find something else. Uh, animals. Yeah, I'll put the bulldog in there. Add to graphic. Center him up in there. And then whatever you wanted to put it in. Then grab it all, bring that to the work bed. Can we get both of them on one sheet? I don't know that we can, but let's take a look. Yeah, sure can. In fact, we're going to group all that, put it back together, and then you can just tell it to dock up. Dock. Well, maybe the toolpath was messing with it. Dock. There we go. Once I got it inside the toolpath. Now that's docked upward. They're made it against each other. Everything is inside there. You can make sure you can get all that. But you can cut this out of one, two, three. Three and a half pieces of 12 by 12 material. And it makes for a very, very nice frame. So it's a little bit challenging, but it's really, really easy at the same time if you've watched this video. People who are going to buy this file, not watch this video, and will be completely lost or aggravated because they can't get everything to line up right or not understand what the line after fill is and all that. So that's why this file is worth every bit of $9.99. So I hope you enjoy the file. This one is also going to be available. Uh, this is in a landscape mode. In fact, if you're watching this video and you're saying, wait a minute, I bought a portrait. I'm probably going to reuse this video for show how to resize these slots and tabs uh, on multiple uh, frame. So don't be confused by that. All right, now you are probably wondering about that finish on that material. How did I get that finish so it looked so good? What did I do? Well, I used, we go to Hobo with Wood. Ding dong, ding dong, 
Ding dong ding ding. There we go. All right, go to my shop supplies. Where there it is. This triple thick glaze from Rustoleum. I used that, and I covered the piece of material that has the engraving on it only. And I do probably two coats. Uh, put on the first coat, let it dry, light sanding, and then a third coat or a second coat, maybe a third coat. And that gives it the appearance of being under glass. And if we look here, is this going to work? Come on. I got to check that link. Well, the link will be working when you look at it. But this is available. Uh, I don't know why my link's not working here. Uh, but uh, that's the trick. Triple thick glaze makes that up here be under glass. And then I put just a, uh, a lacquer finish on the rest of it. And that way it protects it. But only the engraved piece has this triple glaze, triple thick glaze, and it looks like it's under glass here. So uh, I hope you enjoy this file. I hope you find it uh, really enjoyable, uh, a lot of fun to make, and something to be proud of when you're done. So thank you for watching. Thank you for buying the file, and we'll see you in the next video.